hindsight, what would be some good tips uh, to have a successful internship at Elite Club? I made sure that I always was in contact with the guys at Tigers. Uh, I was lucky that I was just down the road with the football club, so it was very easy geographically to come back. Um, but then even when I was in uh, Exeter Uni, which was about three and a half, four hours away from, from Leicester Tigers, in the sort of university holidays, they get like, say, a month off, I would then go maybe do a week where I would actually spend time um, living with one of the coaches uh, and going in for the days um, and just like lending a hand. But like it, it worked two ways. Like They were getting an extra pair of hands for free. Um, I was able to kind of tap into their knowledge and ask some questions, who are they speaking to, um, how have things developed and actually seeing the programme evolve. And I think because I was still having my finger on the pulse, I guess, of what was going on in that environment and staying in touch, I may have stayed in the mind of the, the people doing the hiring. So when there was a position, what, four years later, um, mm. I was the person that they called. What things held you in good stead to really help those athletes and then make an impact and then a positive influence like you mentioned? I think when I, when I look back to my time in the academy, I was a bit of a younger coach, still old enough to hopefully hold some respect over them. But like it comes down to like, what, what were they interested in? Like, and pretty much it was gaming, girls and rugby. And like when I looked at what my interests were, it was gaming, girls and rugby. <laughs> so I think it was a bit, a bit, bit of an easy, easy mesh to kind of understand. Like, yeah, we would chat to some of these 18 year olds. I, I would chat about the 18 year olds about like, um, yeah, playing Fortnite or Call of Duty or FIFA or what games they were playing and who was good, who was bad in the group. And then like chatting about rugby and like, yeah, they were just so invested, like, in being a professional rugby player that they loved it and they loved sport and they loved getting better. And that was, that resonated with me because I'm someone yeah that like loves kind of constantly improving and challenging my own understanding. And like, yeah, they, they were really, really uh, good at like, asking questions as, ah, why are we doing this? And why is this helping us? And me getting a platform to be able to explain those things. What do you think is the best way practically to, to prepare someone to hit, you know be ready for max velocity and but also from a long term perspective improve speed qualities i guess from a technical point of view yeah i think stripping it right back you first of all you you got to ask the question of like the why answer the why so if it's a a warm up like you can categorize warm ups like it might be that we're targeting acceleration it could be we're targeting max velocity qualities it could be that the main focus of the warm up is actually improving their skills or having a bit more like vibe or energy, fun engagement. And so then that kind of colors what you then choose in terms of the what. Um, so like, yeah, if max velocity is, is one of the things that you're, you're trying to develop. Then you're probably going to be looking at more. If you're going to do some drills, you're going to be looking at max velocity based drills, whether that's um, wall drills in positions that are more vertical in nature when you do have the luxury of four to five coaches uh, and for those listening that have that uh, luxury, what, what type of buckets do you like to group athletes into uh, and how does that sort of rotate? Is it like a three-way, three-minute rotation, one coach, one each station or well, yeah, talk us through how that looks. So we actually, um, rather than being like, right, okay, you've got one guy who's doing this drill, one guy who's doing this drill that's linked more towards this bucket and they get exposure to all, mm -hmm. um, one coach would take that group for the entirety of the session um, so this preseason, we, we split guys into, into three groups, uh, a stiffness, a physical and a technical group. Um, and like we stressed that that wasn't necessarily that all that, for example, in the stiffness group, uh, you, you can picture straight away that they would need to do maybe some more like plyometrics, um, type, type work. That wasn't necessarily that they did all plyometrics and didn't do anything else. It was just that more of their training was biased towards doing stiffness, uh, type activities um, so yeah that, that was how we split them in pre-season based off of uh, some profiling that we did what's your sort of balance or if, if there is one what's your sort of take on um, implicit learning uh, explicit feedback and then uh, bringing in analogies um, for, for speed yeah. development is it what are some key considerations whether it be the, who is the athlete in front of you um, in terms of developing athlete or a more senior athlete or is it other things that you take into account yeah, I think I think a blended approach, again, that's the boring answer, but it, it's true. Like I think you can again, I, I'm big on CLA and constraints led approach and um the like ecolog ecological way of uh, of learning and stuff. Um, but 
I think you can go too far down that way. You leave a little bit of bread on the table if you're if you're just like dogmatically, we're just completely task driven, and I'm a passenger, and I just set up the task and let the players solve problems solve completely themselves. I think mm-hmm. actually you can you can uh, yeah expedite someone's learning a little bit quicker with okay that you can see they might not be self organizing um, based off of the task that they're doing, and they need that little bit of a nudge of explicit feedback 